The area was fenced to isolate it from any human activities such as grazing, camping, or hunting during the process of rehabilitation as a basic step towards effective rehabilitation program. The work was distributed into several tasks that should be fulfilled within the five seasons between September 2003 and August 2008. These are the following. Reviving native desert plants. This part of the study focuses on the refilling on the quarries ditches and artificial hills that resulted from the sieving process. This part is considered as an estimated first step towards the enhancement of the environment of the area. The rehabilitation plan was aimed at adopting two methods as follows. Natural rehabilitation, artificial rehabilitation. Natural rehabilitation. This type of rehabilitation process will take place within the least affected areas so that those areas would recover only by protection and without any human interference. During the second year of the study, certain species of plants were observed and recorded and showed that 13 different species have appeared naturally. This diversification has increased from one season to another until the last season, which has witnessed extremely low rainfalls. Despite this, about 60 different species of different native wildlife species have appeared that were not being observed at the beginning of the study. Artificial rehabilitation. This type of rehabilitation process concentrates on the severely damaged areas where the damages are treated by different means because it is quite difficult for plants to grow even under long protection periods. Activities comprise the following. Collecting certain seeds of desert plants, such as Rantarium apaposum, Halaxilon salicorincum, Lysium shawi, Zisphus spanichristi, and Acacia pachycerus, and other native plants that are best to adapt with the harsh desert climate. These seeds will be dried, purified, and treated in order to be planted in greenhouses prepared specially for this purpose until their seedling reach a certain age and able to adapt to the external climate condition. Then they are placed in a rehabilitated area and monitored until they start growing without the need for direct care. Also another method was used which is transferring the seeds into the area needed to be rehabilitated and placing them under a very thin layer during the proper season for their growth. Rehabilitation through the transplantation of desert plants is one of the most useful means for offering the infected areas a chance to rehabilitate itself. The desert planting team pursued the first experiment on artificial rehabilitation on the 17th of November 2005 immediately after the first rain for that season were collected seeds such as Rantarium apaposum, Halixilon salicorincum, Calihornum polygenesis, Spacacrotis plumosa, and Halithium lippi were premixed with soil that was prepared especially and distributed in testing areas. Seeds and cutting of certain selected plants such as Rontarium apaposum, Lucium shawi, and Calihonum polygonides were transplanted in the greenhouse incubator, especially prepared in the Liah site and in the KISR research station at Kebd Desert. These plants were monitored and taken care of during different periods of time throughout the year. The seedling were transferred into different selected sites within the study area of Liah. Accordingly, several plants were transplanted until they reached 30 centimeter in height within one year. 
Experimental varieties were tested during the season of 2005 and 2006 in order to see how they would adapt to the environmental conditions and be naturally irrigated by seasonal rains. Tests were done to identify whatever obstacles would be met so they can be avoided during the continuous course of planting in the affected areas. The Desert Garden The site of gravel crushing companies at Liah area is one of the largest environmentally deteriorated sites to the extent that makes it difficult for desert plants to grow spontaneously. Thus, this site was selected to be a desert garden or an oasis that contains large number of trees and shrubs that are hydration resistant. Water well was drilled, storage tanks were built, and irrigation networks were spread. A larger number of selected trees such as Zizifus spentacristi, Tamaracus and Lepopis were planted. About 40,000 trees were planted around and inside the 12 km square gardens. Water drinking pits resources were set for birds and animals that live in the wilderness, which has led to the habitation of numerous animal species around that area, where protection for water and plants are provided for. Animals and Birds this part of the study monitors the birds and the animals that either exist permanently or seasonally in the site of the study, animals and reptiles permanently residing in the area along with some migrating birds during some seasons of the year. The concern team gathered the measurement and the sizes for a sample of the inhabiting animals where they were monitored for some time and their breeding were followed up to guarantee the optimum environmental conditions for their continuity as it was in a natural ecosystem. Sand Stabilization Experiments The process of fixing the soil surface and protecting it from drifting away is important in the rehabilitation program. Thus, a site was selected to endeavor at different experiments to fix the soil surface and penetrate it with different techniques such as putting metal layers in the shape of squares and to spread layers of gravels on the soil surface together with spreading plant wastes and dry palm leaves to cover the ground. The aims are for the sand and seeds coming with the wind to accumulation and stabilize on those rough surfaces and most likely grow through the help of rainfall. These plants will eventually settle down in the area.